The car you drive around in each year costs hundreds of dollars to run. And the energy you put into that and your house costs really a great amount. Wouldn't it be great if it was all free? Well, in some years to come, it might be through things like this, solar cells. And you can see, if I put this solar cell, this little biscuit, into the light, it powers a motor and makes it whiz round. Put it in the shade, the motor stops. On, off. There's a direct relationship. Light equals electricity. It seems like something for nothing, but it's not really. It's a device to convert one form of energy, light, into another of electricity. And it's a good device. How does it work? First of all, how does electricity work? Well, let's think about matter. Matter is composed of tiny particles, atoms and molecules. This is a simple atom. There's a positively charged nucleus, and around it spins a negatively charged electron. And that's the simplest model of all. But if you put extra energy into that, you can sometimes cause the electron to jump away. And it rolls or flows through the material, and that electron flow is an electric current. You get the same sort of thing with batteries. Have a look at this. Inside the battery, there's a chemical reaction going on. And electrons are flowing from the negative or flat end through the wire round to the positive studded end. And that electron flow is an electric current. And that could drive a motor or make a light, light up or something like that. And the same sort of thing happens with the solar cell. It was found many years ago that if you took a sandwich of two bits of metal, two different sorts of metal, put them together and shone light into them, that the barrier between them acted in a funny way. It caused electrons to flow from one side to the other. And that, of course, was an electric current. Well, metal's not awfully good for that. For one thing, it doesn't let light through very easily. It's much better to use silicon. And that is a silicon wafer. It's the basis of a solar cell. The way it works is this. There are really two layers of silicon. The top one, which you'll call yellow, has one sort of impurity. The bottom part, red, has another. They're sandwiched to make the barrier in between, and when you shine light on it, you get the electron flow. To show you what I mean, I'll tear that across. Imagine we're looking now at the edge of the silicon wafer. We'll make it a bit fatter so we can see what's going on inside it. This is what's going on. Sunlight coming down goes through the silicon wafer, hits the atoms inside, and the electrons, given extra energy, flow through the cell. And you have guessed it, the electron flow is an electric current. Well, that is the silicon wafer. And if silicon is better than metal because it lets light through, it's much worse in this respect. It's very thin, it's like glass, and it breaks terribly easily. In fact, when they manufacture these, they lose about a third of them because they do just that. They break up into fragments. Still, it's not entirely lost if you use it the right way, because even a fragment can behave like a tiny solar cell. And if you join lots of them together, you can harness all the energy, and the more you put together, the more current you get. And that's the way these things are made. It's very cunning. You can see fragments of broken cell are sandwiched together inside there, and by being sandwiched together, they cover the entire area, and that's enough to drive the little motor. Well, these things can power not only motors, but ingenious devices of other kinds. There's a little solar radio. Works on the same sort of cell, but if I shove it in my ear, I can hear music coming up. And the light shining on the cell powers the radio, but also charges a tiny battery inside. In fact, one, hours of sun one hour of sunlight will give you three hours of charge that you can use when the radio's in the dark. That's a radio that will never run out of batteries. Not only that, if you harness lots and lots of these wafers together in this solar collector or solar panel, you can drive quite decent things like a fan. Not a bad idea, because when the sun's out, it gets hot. And if it turns the fan on automatically, well, you keep yourself cool.